Hello everybody, this is Michelle Jorgensen with the Mount Mahogany Steak Self-Reliance. Now this month we're going to talk about communication. This isn't something that you think about when you think about emergency preparation or things to store because as you can see there's not a lot on my table this time. But these are some things that you need to prepare for that have nothing to do with purchasing things but have everything to do with your family and keeping your family safe. So if a disaster would occur right now, literally right now, who are the people that you would worry most about and think most about? Your family, right? Um, what if it happened at 10 a.m. on a Tuesday during school? So where are your children? Where's your husband? Where's your wife? Where are people that you care about? So today we're going to talk about things to prepare so that you can facilitate that communication between family members and we're going to go a little broader scope even than that so that those that you care for and those that you're surrounded by are safe and that you can help make that happen for them. So there's something called the normalcy bias. When I first read about this, I thought, oh, I don't know about that. But the more I think about it, the more I really do believe this is true. So the normalcy bias is based on the fact that we are so used to what happens in our everyday life that we don't think that anything else could happen other than that. So there's an example of a man who lived in Southern California and it was during some of those huge wildfires in Southern California. So there was a wildfire coming toward his home and it was pretty obvious he was going to have to be evacuated. So emergency services said, all right, you need to be out within three hours. He had three hours to get everything in his home, which in reality, that's a pretty good amount of time, right? Three hours. Well, he spent the majority of those three hours pacing back and forth in front of the TV watching CNN because he was sure there was no way those fires were going to get close enough that he was going to have to leave his home. Finally, 15 minutes before the fires were upon him, he grabbed, you know, anything he could possibly grab, his records, his uh, birth certificates, his dog, threw him in the car and got out of there. He had three hours, but yet normalcy bias, the belief that things will happen the way they've always happened, overpowered reason, and he wasted two hours and 45 minutes of those three hours thinking it was no way it would happen. And he only had 15 minutes to actually do it. So what that tells us is, in time of an emergency, our brain sometimes misfires and doesn't really work the way we want it to. So we have to be so prepared that in the time of an emergency, we don't have to think anymore. It's just autopilot. We know exactly what to do. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a family plan. If you don't have a family plan, once you get one in place, you'll be amazed at how much relief it brings to you. And this isn't something fancy at all, literally. This is a sheet of paper that says, this is my name, this is my cell phone number, this is how to contact me if my kid's at school and something happens. So on the website, you'll find fillable forms to do exactly that. That is goal number one this month, is create a family plan. Now, once you've created your family plan and your family's safe and you know where they all are, the next step or next tier in preparation is neighborhood. So your family's here, you're great, you're happy, everybody's home. So now, what happens in the neighborhood? And I've had people ask me this. I'll tell you what we're going to be doing in the stake, and some wards in the stake already have this in place, but we're gonna really be fine tuning this over the next couple of months. So in each neighborhood, there's block captains assigned. So you have a block captain assigned to you. Now the block captain will make sure that you have a packet like this at your home. What this what this ca uh, this packet is is tags, instructions how to use it, instructions what to do in an emergency. When an emergency occurs, you need to alert your neighborhood block captain to the status of your home. This is no assistance needed. This is needed, but it's not urgent, very urgent, or unfortunately fatality. So at a glance, your neighborhood block captain can assess the needs of your home. So make sure that you have the tags. And goal number two is find out who your block captain is. Make friends with them. Figure out who they are. Learn their name. So that's the neighborhood level. The next tier up is the ward. Now, the interesting thing about the city is that the city's actually delegated this to the wards and the stakes in Utah, primarily because those organizations are already in place. There's already geographic boundaries that set apart your ward. There's geographic boundaries that set apart your stake. So the, the city, Pleasant Grove City, I know for sure, has said the wards are going to be these blocks and block captains. The stakes are going to be um, another organization that is over the wards under their jurisdiction. So they're using our already existing geographic boundaries, which is nice. So at the stake level, 
Um, there'll be a stake council. Sorry, let's me skip ward. So ward is where a lot of the needs are going to be handled because they're going to be handled by each of us for each other. So that's where a lot of the ward needs are going to be handled. But if there's greater need, the stake will also set up what's called an emergency operations center. And the state council has all been trained in how to handle an emergency. And anything coming from the ward to the stake will be passed through runners and communications channels that are already set up. Now, information from the stake then goes to the city, and there's already channels set up for that. And then, then anything from the city to church headquarters goes through the Linden Cannery. So all of these things are in place. So I wanted you to know that. We're already working on all of these things for you. You need to just get step number one done, your family plan. Now, radios, things that are good to have on hand as far as communication go. Just a regular old FM AM radio. We don't use these anymore. Make sure it has batteries, that you can change batteries and that it can play. So this one may be where emergency communication has to go because a lot of our digital things may go down during an emergency. Ham radio. This is something that takes a little bit of effort to get a license for, but this will be essential in any kind of an emergency because you're going to be able to contact people. And all of this network has been set up in the wards and in the stakes for us. Um, so landlines. If an emergency were to occur, landline is going to be very useful. I don't even have a landline anymore, so I know a lot of us don't. Use your cell phones as long as they are possible, but typically it's been forecasted or projected that the cell phones would be so jammed with people calling that they actually would be quite useless very quickly. So that's when a ham radio or something of that sort would be useful. But the next best thing is going to be our feet. It's going to be runners. And that's probably what we use for a lot of communication is running back and forth. It's the old fashioned way. We'll have, we'll have to get in shape again. Um, there are a couple things that I wanted to cover that really are part of communication, but I think are important to talk about. And we really don't have another time to talk about them. That's what's called shelter in place. So if a disaster were to occur, you would alert your block captain, I'm good, but then you would need to designate or set apart some place in your home that's called a shelter in place location. And if there were some kind of a disaster where there was danger in a lot of our homes, you would set up a location in your home for shelter in place. So there'll be information on the website about that, but basically what it is is you pick one room and you, you settle and you stay and you do most everything in that one room. If there's any kind of a chemical threat, you use plastic from floor to ceiling and duct tape it in place and seal yourself off for a little while to keep that chemical threat away. If something happens while you're in your car, shut off all your vents so that you're not getting any outside air and go somewhere that's in the shade and just park. So that's how you shelter in place in your car. So again, like I said, there'll be information online about those two things. So again, let's reiterate the two goals for this month, family plan, create one laminate it, put it in your kid's backpack, put it in your husband's, you know, the, the side pocket in your husband's car, wherever you might be, have a copy of that. The second thing is block captain. Find out who your block captain is, make friends so that any time in the time of an emergency, you'd be able to receive help from them. This is what uh, I think is very important for us to prepare for as far as communications going in an emergency. Thanks for watching today.